It's tabletop time. I'm Dave, and today we are finally tackling my long-awaited Tau kill team. We've talked about this a few times in previous videos, and it is the force that I'm going to be fighting Jazza with in our upcoming kill team face-off. The Astro Primersa first my kill team chapter. Now, as we dive into me building these models and starting this project, I thought it was worth mentioning that this is something that has been on the back burner for me since the Tau came out. I've wanted to start a Tau Force and have tried to a few times over my history, but now I've finally committed and I'm really excited to share with you what I've done and I hope you like it. So let's get into it. Now, as I just mentioned, this journey started for me a very long time ago. It was in fact when I was in high school and I had been collecting Chaos Space Marines for a few years. The Tau had just come out or at the time I believe their second release, their 2004 five or six odd release that introduced a lot of new models to the range. It was when Vespered Stingwings became a reality and really the Tau started to become alive and become part of the 40k world. In the early thousands, I was very inspired and interested in mecha anime like Neon Genesis Evangelion, was playing a whole bunch of popular games like Starcraft, which had the advanced alien Protoss in it. I'd also grown up playing Mech Warrior, so my interest in mecha was pretty high at the time. And when the Tau got their second release in the mid early thousands, I was pretty keen to get started. Unfortunately, being new to the hobby and with limited funds, that experiment only lasted about one box of Fire Warriors, as the conversion process I'd taken it upon myself to attempt was a little bit outside the scope of my ability, and as many teenagers, I got frustrated and kind of put them on the shelf and didn't touch them again. My interest in the Tau did return several years ago. I bought a whole 2000 point army in boxes that I never ended up building or painting, and attempted once again to make some content concept pieces. With a bit more maturity and some advanced knowledge of sculpting, I made some customized Tower Fire Warriors. They were still pretty rough as this was many years ago, but I at least got a few pieces finished. And again, the army went back on the shelf. That's why I'm really excited today to be able to say that uh, it's happened. It's finally happened. And I'm making my Tau Sept in earnest. Originally, the reason my attention span had fallen by the wayside on these models was I didn't have these parts and custom sculpting things for literally hundreds of models for an entire army can be tedious to the point that you just abandon the project. With the ability to 3D print the puppets for back banners and also the more samurai inspired shoulders and this cool 3D file I found called the Katauna, a link will now be somewhere because I'm gonna send that to the editor, so. Um, so in building the Fire Warriors, I wanted to make sure I had dynamic poses as this was a kill team. I split my kill team evenly in equipment, making three Fire Warrior Breaches and three Fire Warriors with Pulse Rifles. I've always liked the Pulse Rifles and never been a fan of Pulse Carbines on Fire Warriors. The massive long rifle just, it, that's Tau to me. But I will say when the Breaches came out, the idea of plasma shotguns really made me think of Halo for some reason, even though there's no plasma shotguns in Halo. It just gave me that kind of vibe, so I love it. And I. I kind of like breaches. I think they look really cool. So I wanted to make three of each. I also wanted to add some diversity into my Tau Force. And one of the ways I've done that is by creating a Guevisa La, which is a human auxiliary fighting with them. I sculpted an extra finger onto each of their hands because the Tau only have three fingers and humans have four. Cut their legs off from the knees down and added combat boots and then just replaced the head. And I do think this kind of looks like the most realistic depiction of Guevisa La because the Tau would equip all their soldiers equally. So if a human is in their force, well, why wouldn't they be using the same armor and weaponry as the Tau or as close to it as they could? At least that's my take on it. Now for the stealth suits, I've never really liked the look of that big helmet on the front. And I wanted to go with something I'd seen on Crisis suits done a lot, which was to take a Tau drone and turn it into the head of the suit. And with more room on the model, I also decided to play with the idea of the dual katana. Uh, in a lot of art, I see samurai and they have two katanas or they'll have a short sword and a long sword. So I used two different sizes of swords on the stealth suits just to add a little bit more variety. I also wanted these stealth suits to feel unique and Murray had actually given me a whole bunch of his stealth suit parts and crisis suit parts to use to kind of convert and change and do things a little bit differently. So one of the things I decided to do was to use a crisis suit burst cannon. The crisis suit burst cannon doesn't have the same casing on it so it has the raw barrels exposed. So using that, cutting off a marker light, turning it into a handle and gluing the gun sideways. I have this stealth suit who has a heavy gunner feel despite being armed with the same 
same equipment. And with those three built, I had a pretty sweet looking stealth suit squad. And in fact, a completed kill team. So the big changing point for my Tau army, I think has honestly been time, maturity, patience, but most importantly, technology. One thing that I couldn't do when I was younger was 3D print. It simply wasn't accessible. But now with awesome companies out there making really cool parts like Puppets War, I was able to take pieces that really cut down on the amount of work I had to do. The Japanese inspired shoulder pads were exactly what I was going for. And the back banners were something I always wanted but was never ambitious enough to try. So thankfully, Puppets were already made these parts and with the wonder of 3D printing I could scale them appropriately for the Tau as originally I believe they're intended for sort of space marine equivalent size models. Puppets War have always supplied a really large range of custom resin pieces that you can order from their website but they've also recently started to do a Patreon subscription. Their December release are some very cool looking space aliens with multi-limbed claws and well let's be honest a very cool Tyranid vibe but their modular heads arms and options sets them apart from many other Patreons that deliver single complete miniatures with no posability or customization. Now as a special bonus they are putting together for their patrons an amazingly cool custom chessboard. For those who want to print out a very sweet and stylistic chessboard and put it together as a very cool project for the start of the new year. Anyway I have talked enough, ranted enough about the joy of 3D printing. I will now rant about the joy of my tower chapter. A lot of people have been asking on the channel, hey Dave, where are your space marines? Uh, earlier in the year, I talked about my custom chapter who ultimately named by you commoners became called the Shields of Avalon. And at the time I was very enthusiastic about this chapter idea. And then Jazza's enthusiasm for the Astra Primersa really came to the fore. And it seemed boring and uninteresting for me to be doing another space marine chapter alongside him. So I kind of wound it back a little bit. Now that isn't to say I'm never doing it or it's gone. I still have plans to build some character models and some really cool concept stuff for the chapter because it was something I really wanted to do. But I thought I'd give that update now that my attention has drifted elsewhere as a point of making things a little bit more interesting. Now the Tau have a long history of comical and silly names. In fact, their name for humans is of course Guela. And those gorillas that they often encounter uh, don't enjoy the name very much, I don't know. But Games Workshop have always had a tongue-in-cheek way of dealing with their alien languages. The craft world Eldar refer to humans as Mon K. I kind of find it funny, but it also meant that I did not feel any remorse in going with the most on the nose and obvious name for my sept. They are the Sakura. Sakura is the Japanese word for cherry blossom. And the cherry blossom was what inspired a lot of the paint scheme for this chapter. But it also felt like it worked really well with the Tao lore. The cherry blossom can often be used to symbolize sort of life, but also the fleeting nature of life because cherry blossoms bloom and then disappear in only a few short days to weeks, which I thought felt really good for the Tau who are known for having really short lifespans at 40 years and then trying to live a really dynamic, vibrant existence due to that time constraint. So in a way, I thought that the Sakura really felt right for the Tau. In terms of lore, I wanted to create a super diverse faction of Tau that were a little bit different and true to my interests, but also felt like they could fit in the world. So my sept represents the Tau that don't really have a place in the rest of Tau society, but they find their own identity in this sept, the Sakura. So the Tau worlds are called septs and basically armies raised from those worlds take on that name. For example, Tau is their homeworld and the Tau sept represents the forces that come from Tau. This is a sept of not really drifters, but those Tau assigned to space stations and orbital platforms and separate from that usual sept structure that unify under one banner. And they have a few identifying characteristics. One of them is that they're more openly accepting of auxiliaries. Not being large enough to field entire world conquering armies, they often field more specialized forces. And those forces utilize people for their individual talents and skills within the squads. That is why a Gue Veza La might find his way into a Tau Fire Warrior squad rather than as a part of an auxiliary regiment. They put the best people for the job in their squadrons. Another thing people will say is that the Tau notoriously suck in melee, so why do my Tau have katanas? They also hate fighting in melee. Well, the thing is, uh, yes. 
I'm not contesting that in any way. The Tau are also practical and pragmatic and a large place that my forces fight is on board ships in zone mortalis situations. And if you are frequently put into close quarters combat with an enemy that insists on trying to stab you in close quarters, my Tau Sakura Sept have just decided it's worth being equipped just in case. So they do train in a form of combat, but they're still, being Tau, not particularly good at it. It's just about being equipped for the job more so than having a preference for that style of combat. Now, as I promised, I would be going into a little bit of detail on how I painted the Tau. So I primed them black to make sure they had a strong undertone, a dark black coming from underneath. And then I primed them from sort of a two thirds angle using Vallejo's cold gray, and then almost at an 80% or high angle coming down with the stonewall gray. The undersuit I painted with Scale 75's Instant Alchemy. There was actually a green I really wanted to use and I knew with the Xenothal painting it would allow that to be a quick way to save some time. Remember this is an army paint job and while I probably spent a little bit more time going above and beyond because it's a kill team, I wanted the paint scheme to be scalable to an army later and not overcomplicated in areas that didn't need to be. For the areas that would eventually become pink on the model to represent the Sakura or Cherry Blossom, I used Vallejo Scarlet Red. It to the side right now is the only time you'll ever be right here on this day in this moment in this place like around what you take it all in for a phase and it's gone and in place is a place you never thought that you'd be where you ask why you ain't where you want this is all it's all right let it fall i left a few areas black such as the belt and pouches but for the most part this was the base coating done with the base colors established i went in and mixed some airbrush thinner with some agrax earth shade wash to make a bit of a pin wash to apply to all the panel lines on the model and really pop out that towel armor. This effect did a lot to suddenly make the models look a little bit more interesting. I highlighted the white areas of the armor again in stonewall gray and then up to a mix of whites and then white point highlights. The black areas were highlighted with stone gray in a fairly simple and rough technique as they were areas of utility and leather that would fall away in the final paint scheme. After that was done, I highlighted the red with squid pink and then highlighted up to point highlights all the way through to white, blending at each step to add multiple bits of color. Right now, wanted to know that we major, see from all of the angles, can't ever turn off my brain, from everything we just saying, but I'm just shocked that I'm stable, if there's a guy, she's amazing. Wave, I spill my soul on the table, I give it all while I'm able. I can't break bread with no stranger. I hold it down for my brothers. Been tight since snaps in the cradle. Since pick up rounds in the park, we found peace and sound to that chain link neck. Catch our dreams with each patron. And the point of freehand on all the models was their back banners. These I painted using the same red techniques and I created my own icon for the chapter. It is based on a cherry blossom with the five points representing the five petals on a cherry blossom, but also representing the five major sphere expansions of the Tau Empire. Now on the back banners themselves, the arrangement of this symbol in 3D space represents the squad itself. So I made sure to paint the back banners of the breaches differently to the ones with pulse rifles, as ultimately once I expand this force out into the army, they will be part of different 10-man squads. Basing these models also utilize some really cool 3D models, just for a bit of flair on the characters. I took some traditional Japanese shrine style steps and lantern for some, and glued them onto a couple of the bases. For the rest of the bases, I went with a mud putty just to build a bit of texture, and then on all of them, rained down some static grass. On top of this, I added some gamers grass tufts just to give a little bit more texture. Texture. Now to really sell the cherry blossom motif, I ordered some cherry blossoms from a company called Mini Nature. These leaves could then be glued onto some woodland scenic stems, which created little trees and branches and brought the cherry blossom motif onto the bases of the model. Now a little tip I came up with for adhering these small and weak branch-like structures onto models was actually to glue a gamer's grass tuft onto the base. Then to heavily apply super glue to the bottom of the little stick that you're trying to glue onto the base. I then crammed that into the middle of the gamer's grass tuft and used tweezers to sort of squish some of the inner tuft particles onto the twig, basically creating a little cradle that glued and caught onto the bottom of the tuft. This was a great way to adhere them to the bases without the forethought of having sculpted or drilled a hole to slide the stick into. Once all these elements were combined on the bases, I finished them up with some of Citadel's Valhallen Blizzard, covering the bases in snow and also applying some to the top of those cherry blossoms. 
Williams. I didn't put any of the snow on my towel models. I kind of like the idea that this is the end of season or an unseasonable snow. So with the basing done, I'm really excited to show to you the finished product in all its glory. So here we have them. My Tao Sakura Sept. I really hope you've enjoyed this journey, the little bit of lore that I inserted, and also just this different take on Tau. We have seen Tau painted white ever since they changed the scheme, but hopefully we haven't seen Tau painted in samurai gear with pink before. So it's a bit new, it's a little bit of an interesting take, and it's been so much fun to make. This has been a project I've been trying to do, as I mentioned earlier, for over 15 years. So it's super cathartic to have finally actually built a cool looking assembled force, and I cannot wait to fight Jazza with them. Come on guys, give the towel some love. The Prime Ursa are definitely not the underdogs. That's my towel. So I don't know. Let's give some love to the Xenos. They don't get it enough and they're pretty cool. And if you really like this stuff and want to see more, please let us know. We do read the comments. It's great to see all of your input and all of your ideas and suggestions. So if there's more stuff you'd like to see from my towel sept, well, I certainly would love to keep making them and uh, bringing them and showing them to you guys. Thank you so much to our patrons. It's been a pleasure doing a couple of mini streams with you all and hanging out and getting your advice, ideas, and thoughts about how this whole project was going. It was so good to have a little outlet that I could share all these secret behind the scenes things before we revealed them. So to our patrons in the mini club, you guys are awesome. And uh, and I can't wait to share with you more as I keep developing the project. And even if we don't make too many more videos on the Sakura Sept, I will continue to share my personal progress with you all there. So once again, thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed, maybe subscribe. I don't know, that's a good idea. But honestly, let's face it, it's the end of the video. So based on analytics, roughly one in four of you are still watching. 75% of you have clicked off the video by this point, And that number is only increasing the longer I talk. Statistics are a fascinating thing and analytics are also fascinating. So as I continue to talk and think about that number dwindling, probably 18% now is my assumption. Um, we'll just get to that awkward ending, but it's not going to come because, uh, I don't know. Mari's been here the whole time. Yay.